Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Julia. We are two high school best friends and college roommates with an interesting dynamic. And we are here to culture each other on different aspects in pop culture. We talk about all things music, movies, musicals, Disney, and more. This is Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Hello, and welcome to episode four of Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Hello, welcome back. We are hot, we are sweaty, and we are ready, ready to begin. <laughs> we are hot and sweaty and ready. <laughs> yes. All right, so we're going to get started with nonsense news. Would you like to go first? Um, If I can find it, yes. <laughs> so my first piece of news is that we finally got my Google Home set up in our room. Yes, Dimitri is alive and well. Mm-hmm. We played some games with him. It was fun. Yes, we've been having issues trying to set him up in Since my dorm room for some reason yeah and so it just kind of gave up for a while and then i brought him home and my dad was like we'll just do this and i'm like oh oh <laughs> so we did and it works now and we learned all kinds of new things that we can do with it we yeah. played like a magic eight ball kind of thing we played mm-hmm. trivia it was it was good fun indeed all right what you got next uh the next thing is that we found out the door to the bathroom is smaller <laughs> than normal doors. It is. We have to post a picture of it on Instagram compared to our actual door. But it blew our minds when Shane pointed it out. He's like, your door is extra skinny. We're like, what? Yeah. And it, it is. It is. It's about a foot. How much was it? A foot and about seven to nine inches yeah, wide? Something like that. I think we use we use my ruler to measure the door. Yeah, so that's not an exact measurement. It's probably mm-hmm. off, but that's what I measure. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that's weird. It is really weird. And then last piece of news. This is my last week of speech class. Yay! And I'm excited. Her I last speech was great, by I the way. I don't like speech. <laughs> I have to start speech next semester, so I'm not looking forward to it. But I have a different teacher than her. So yeah. I hope. And you're there. not doing it online. Uh, you get to do it in person. I don't know so. if I want that. <laughs> well, her last speech, she had to write in like, like a special occasion speech. Yeah. And she she picked my wedding instead of like a funeral <laughs> or something like a normal person. It was great. I'm super excited. Hey, at least three other people also did weddings, oh, but they cool. did it for like their siblings. Oh interesting (laughs) yeah well she did it for me and it was a super cute and funny speech and i loved it okay so my news stories two of them are animal crossing related because i found something out today but my first story is that i have been obsessed with getting cookies from the cafeteria these last couple weeks yeah like i will go and i'll get three and then i'll snack on cookies throughout the day and then i'll get three the next day and i'll take them home and i'll stuff them in my pockets I just always have a cookie on me. And I finished my last cookie today, so now I have to go get more tomorrow. Well, you could have gotten more today, but you said, no, nah, I'm not in a cookie mood. <laughs> That's true. It was just so hot in here. I was just not feeling so It's sweet. miserable. Yeah. Okay, so my Animal Crossing stories for all of you who are playing um, is that Animal Crossing is coming out with a Mario update. I think the the update was today, but the items aren't coming out until March 1st, which is going to be really exciting because we don't have to walk our entire islands anymore because we're going to get warp pipes. You step on in one and then you come out the other side. So that's going to be awesome Mm -hmm. because... Julia, we've been playing Animal Crossing almost every day this week, and she, I don't she have can a tell switch. You, my <laughs> island is crowded, and there are fences everywhere, and it's really hard to navigate. Yes, we only we we only play on Lily's island because I don't have a switch, so <laughs> I just chill there. And my last story, I found out today, Sanrio villagers are officially coming to Animal Crossing, and I have been waiting for this since the game came out. I have the amiibo cards um, from the last time that they came into existence and all you can get out of the amiibos right now are posters but coming soon i think march 26th is the update um i think they the cards will come back into store on the 26th and i think the actual update's on the 18th and that is when sanrio characters and the furniture as well are coming back into the game so goodbye all of the villagers i already have you're all moving out and hello my new ones and i'm going to remodel everything going to be a long day (laughs) 
Interesting. That's all I have. <laughs> cool. Well, I got nothing else. Cool. So. All right. So that is all for nonsense news. Ding. Ding. <laughs> so let us now get into Walt Lily World. Ding. Ding. <laughs> I forgot that's what was next, but yes. you may go now. All right. <laughs> so I have... Most, I think all of my news stories except for one are from Disney World today. So, details for the 50th anniversary were announced, um, like, right after we recorded. Oh, I remember that happening. The last podcast. <laughs> and I was so sad that I didn't get to talk about it. But the details were announced. Um, the castle's getting new decorations. And it's super pretty. A bunch of, like, gold ribbons and a big old 50 on the castle. It's going to be really pretty. And you're not going to want to miss it. Um, Minnie and Mickey are getting new iridescent costumes, like ear iridescent, and I like that idea. I think it's really cute. Um, Epcot, the Tower of Terror, and the Tree of Lights at Animal Kingdom are all getting new lights, um, like nighttime light shows, and it's supposed to be really pretty. And it's the whole theme is like iridescent gold, like blues, and like really mm. pretty. And it's it's a nice theme, and everything's really pretty. I'm really excited to see it. My next story, um, I'll do the Hong Kong Disneyland story first. So it reopened. Um, that's what we talked about in the last podcast. And with their reopening, Woody, Jesse, and Buzz all got new looks. And they look so much nicer. I yeah. didn't realize how threatening and scary that they looked <laughs> until I saw their new costumes. But yeah. I like did a double take. I was like, what in the world have I been taking pictures with? <laughs> Um, we'll post pictures of those on Instagram, too. I have those ready to go. Um, our last three updates are from Disney World, and one of them is kind of all parks kind of thing. So, permits were filed for the new Jungle Cruise refurbishment. Um, so if you haven't heard, Jungle Cruise is getting a new story, new characters, animatronics, and a couple new scenes. And it's interesting. I don't know if you've ever done the Jungle Cruise before. I don't remember ex- I'm- like it sounds vaguely familiar Mm -hmm. but like what is it it's not my (laughs) kind of thing you sit in a boat um you look at animatronic is it the boat and there's like a tour guide and you're okay and they're really awkward and they tell funny (gasps) jokes yeah i've seen a bunch of videos of it i i have only been to disney world once and i was very young yeah and i like vaguely remember being on that (laughs) <laughs> it's not really my thing, but I am excited about this. Um, they're getting new characters. I think they're going to have, like, an art, like, someone who's into art, someone who's into, like, uh, bugs, like, all kinds of new, like, like researchers and stuff. Instead of just, like, a bunch of, like, dudes on a pole, like, running away from a rhino, it's going to be, like, a whole bunch of different, like, varied, like, people. And they are going to have stories and, like, faces and characters. And it's really interesting. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be, like, real characters to follow Maybe I'm with. thinking of something different. You probably Because now, I think I'm, I think I am thinking of something different. Okay. Because now, after you said that, I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not, when I think of Jungle Cruise, I wouldn't remember that either. So you you probably have done it before. Is this ro- is this outside? Yes. Am I just dumb? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, is the heat like getting to me? <laughs> it's sure getting to me. Oh my goodness. Um, well, okay. You, I'm sure you've done it before. The next story. The next story I have is some menus were released for Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival. And I showed you a picture of it earlier, but there is a blueberry cheesecake funnel cake, and it looks delicious. Yeah. I gained 10 pounds just looking at it. (laughs) It looks so good. I would... Oh, my gosh. I wish I was going back during the festival, because I would get that in a heartbeat. Mmm. And the last story that I have is kind of a sad one, but also it it, it makes sense. Um... Disneyland Paris has this ride and learn series on YouTube where they've been like recording like really nice videos of the rides and like I th- I haven't watched them but I'm pretty sure they just talk about it and like some history and whatever behind mm-hmm. the ride. Um, well, and their their Peter Pan flight video they digitally edit out Tiger Lily and her tribe, um, mm. and they're in talks of removing the animatronic figures of Tiger Lily and her tribe from all of the parks worldwide. Interesting. Which is interesting. 
And I'm wondering if they're going to edit the movie on Disney Plus as well. Because I've heard that they're starting to um, take some older Disney movies off of the kids version of yeah. Disney Plus. Yeah. So I guess we're going to see what, what happens with that. But yeah. they are, they're retheming Splash Mountain and the Jungle Cruise as well as being rethemed now. Uh-huh. So I wonder if Peter Pan's flight is next on the chopping block. Wait, okay. Going back to Jungle Cruise. <laughs> So I was still thinking about this. What's the theme of Jungle Cruise? Um, besides you're in a jungle and you're in a cruise. I mean, I don't, as far as I know, I've only been on it once in my life. Out okay. Of all the I've been on. And I'm not sure if there's a story story. I didn't think there, there was. But there are some stereotypes in the ride that I think is what's being rethemed. Okay. I, like, don't remember. Um, I know there's a, there's... I think his, he's Trader Sam, and he's, like, he he sells shrunken heads to you. Mm. And I, I'm pretty sure he's staying. But it's just a bunch of white dudes, like, climbing up a tree away from a rhino. And they're changing all of them to, like, d- like different, like, um, like, a, like, a variety of people. Okay. So that's interesting. Okay. I don't know. I'm not sure what the story of Jungle Cruise is. But now it's going to have one if it didn't before. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I'm yeah. learning so many things today. <laughs> um, so that's all I have. Interesting. Any more comments on Jungle Cruise? <laughs> Jungle Cruise? <laughs> no, but I'm going to look up Jungle Cruise after this to see if I'm going insane or okay. not. Because, like, I have no idea if we're on the same page. <laughs> I think you are. I mean, I don't, you, know. you asked me if it was outside, so I think you're remembering it. I have, Vaguely. <laughs> I don't remember how old I was when I went. Like, I was, like... This was when we still lived in Antioch. Like, mm-hmm. this was before we even moved. So, like, Harrison was, like, a toddler. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. So, we will we will do research on the Jungle Cruise. And if I find anything that it does have a story, um, we will also say something about that on our Instagram. Yeah. All right. So, that's it for Walt Lily World. Ding. Ding. <laughs> All right. So, before we get into repeat of the week, um, during our break, <laughs> well, we, had, we had a break, but you guys didn't know it. Uh, we had a break, <laughs> and we watched Jungle Cruise. Yes, and she does remember I it. do vaguely remember. Yes. Um, <laughs> so we were looking at pictures of the new update as well, and the characters of the tree, they're, they're going to have a bird watcher, uh, an artist. They're going to have um, an entomologist, which is someone who studies bugs. Um, the skipper themselves are going to have an animatronic. Mm-hmm. And I think there is one more person, but I can't remember what they were. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. So, yeah. But. Interesting. Okay. Now into yes. repeat of the week. Yeah, ding. <laughs> ding. Okay. Um, both of us came up with this this morning. Yes. You, it came to me in my sleep. Uh, yeah. Yours came to you in your sleep. Mine came to my me because I was sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, who wants to start? You can go first. <laughs> okay. So, I woke up too early this morning. Yeah. Um, We had nothing to do today, and my brain woke me up at 7.30, <laughs> and I was not okay with that. She always wakes up at, like, around 10 every day, and now when it actually matters, she wakes up at 7. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but basically, I started going down, like, this rabbit hole of, like, um being sad because (laughs) i miss theater and i miss doing shows and um then i started thinking about the last show i was supposed to do and so this song is these are the days of our lives oh my gosh by queen from their innuendo album (laughs) (laughs) um i was um in so the last musical we were supposed to do in high school before it got dead Ronad. it got Ronad. <laughs> um was we will rock you mm-hmm. and it has all the music from queen in it and um i played buddy holly and the crickets yeah yeah and i sang this song and i was looking at the lyrics today because for some reason i was just like my brain was like let's make ourselves more sad (laughs) and i um would like to share with you some of my favorite lyrics from the song um you can't turn back the clock you can't turn back the tide ain't that a shame how true (laughs) ain't that a shame yeah (laughs) 
man, I think we all have those moments in our lives where we're like, man, if we could just like go back in time and fix that, we would. Yeah. 100%. I know I have some of those, but mm-hmm. yeah. And then the next line applies to me. No use in sitting and a thinking on what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I was doing this morning. This morning yeah. <laughs> and, um, and the next line is from the chorus. Or, Those days are all gone now. But one thing is true. When I look and I find I still love you. Oh. Sad. Stop it. You're making me sad. <laughs> I've Take been your really sad all away. day. Um, because I miss theater and I miss yeah, me too. my people. And as much as I don't want to admit it, I miss high school. Same. <laughs> Me too. So it was. I mean, I've been in a weird spot all day. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, this is a really good song. So Mm -hmm. you should go listen to it. Yeah. Um, I have like the meaning in the musical is different than the meaning that is the actual song. Um, and then I also have my own meaning for it. Mm -hmm. So I love music because like there can be meaning for a song but you can make up your own meaning for this yeah. <laughs> and that's what I do for this song this song I just make it apply to myself mm-hmm. and high school and how I feel like I didn't appreciate it enough in the moment same yeah, yeah. I feel that so I think that's all I got so my song is on a different wavelength I guess <laughs> um I was having a weird dream last night and the song was in my dream Um, so you know how sometimes you have songs that, like, are stuck in your head all night and, like, in your dreams? Yeah. Yeah. So I had Show Yourself from Frozen 2 in my head all night. (sighs) And I was not going to do this song today, but it's been stuck in my head all day. So that Mm -hmm. was happening. Um, so I don't really have any standout lyrics for this song because it's pretty, I mean, I'd say it's pretty basic. Like, Mm -hmm. I I would agree with you. Disney songs have meaning, but, like, it's not anything I want to delve into. You know what I mean? So. Yes. I do want to talk about just the song in general and just, like, things about, like, the scene it's in. This, the animation in the scene is so pretty. And Julia hasn't seen Frozen 2 yet. And after we watch Cars 3 tonight, maybe I'll try to convince her to watch Frozen 2. Um, you're going to see it someday. You can't uh, escape. I'm going to lock you in the room and take away your key. No. And you have to watch it. I'll uh, jump out the window. No, I there's will. a screen. Remember, I, you said you can't fall out. I can push out the screen. <laughs> um, so, again, I love how pretty the animation is. Um, all the reflections off the ice and all the sparkles on the walls is just so nice. And also with her hair down, it's just a whole nother look. And I'm into it. And I really like it. You haven't really seen it very much besides just pictures, huh? I mean, I might have in, like, a movie review or something. Oh. But... Her hair down is... I, I like it a lot better than her than her classic braid. I think yeah, I, think I, nice. I agree. Um, also, just the song in general is a really nice song, like, in the in the movie itself. Um. Frozen 2 is not really known for its music, I guess, com- like, compared to the first one, of course. Letting it was everywhere. Mm-hmm. But um, most people are into uh, into the unknown more than the song, but I like this song more. Uh-huh. Um, it's not the it's not the Frozen 2 song, like, Let It Go was the Frozen song. Yeah. But it, it's really nice. And when she gets to sing with her mom at the end, and she, like, realizes that she herself is... <laughs> what on earth just happened? <laughs> My hair just spun a bobby pin and I don't know where it came from. <laughs> this um, is what happens when you're a girl. There's bobby the pins everywhere and you don't know where from? they come from. <laughs> well, that happens. Um, but she gets like to have a nice moment with her mom and she gets to realize that she herself is what she's been looking for her whole life. Mm. And it's nice because this whole time she's questioning like... Show me, like, show yourself. So like, maybe, you? so if I sing a song with my mom, then maybe you'll realize <laughs> that that you are what you were looking for. Wow. wow. When I see my mom tomorrow, I'm going to tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, like, also the way that she prances through this, like, glacier or, like, ice cave or I think it's on, on a hall end. We usually, like, prances through it. What <laughs> I think of is, like, the horse girl videos. <laughs> Not like that, not like that. Um, I don't know, she just, like, walks through this ice cave like it's nothing. And I imagine just, like, 
when it was icy last week, we'd take one step on the stairs and we'd almost die. Yeah. So just imagining, like, running through this ice cave, we'd just be, like, falling. And, like, she, like, jumps and does ice parkour. Like, it's a cartoon. girl, I'd be dead. <laughs> it's a cartoon. And I'm going to regret saying that in a few minutes once we talk about cars. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Because we have so many ex- existential, cri- like, crisis, like, when it comes to cars. Like, we just, like, think about it and we get down this rabbit hole. Yeah. It's insane. So that's all I have for my repeat of the week. Oh my gosh. Are you good? I, maybe. I didn't mean mentally. I just meant, are you done? Oh, yeah. I'm t- but are you good? <laughs> You're not good. <laughs> that's it for repeat of the week. Ding. Ding. All right. Welcome back to Waving Through a Musical Window. Ding. Ding. <laughs> So, on my last Waving Through a Musical Window, I did Phantom of the Opera, and I said that the next one I do would be Love Never Dies, which is the sequel to the Phantom of the Opera. Mm-hmm. So, we have lots of opinions on this. Um, I have one opinion, and it's that I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, here's a synopsis, and then we'll get into a little bit of the, the story uh, after this. Yeah. So. Is a very dramatic synopsis, which I got off Playbill, by the way. For all of your theater needs. <clears throat> Here we go. The year is 1907. <gasps> it is ten years after his disappearance from the Paris Opera House, and the Phantom has escaped to a new life in New York, where he lives amongst the screaming joy rides and freak shows of Coney Island. In this new electrically charged world, he has finally found a place for his music to soar. All that is missing is his love, Christine Daae. Now, one of the world's finest sopranos, Christine is struggling in an ailing marriage to Raoul. So, it is with excitement that she accepts an invitation to travel to New York and perform at a renowned opera house. In a final bid to win back her love, the Phantom lures Christine, her husband, and their young son, Gustave, from Manhattan to the glittering and glorious world of Coney Island, who have no idea what is in store for them. Dun, dun, dun. So, yep. the story, it sounds interesting in the synopsis, but mm. when you watch it on stage, it is abysmal. <laughs> the story is awful. Um, they take everything from the Phantom of the Opera and stomp on it several times. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, Gustav, the Who's son, that? Oh, the little boy. Okay. Is a big plot point. In yes, this. he is. He okay. So Lillian came mm-hmm. over to my house one day, and she has the recording on DVD on DVD yeah. of the Australian production. This is like the official like recording, recording the, like it. the movie, basically. yeah. And we were like, what? Five minutes into it, yeah. I saw the little boy, and I was like, oh, that's gonna be the Phantom Son, isn't it? And she was right. <laughs> so, Gustav is the Phantom's child, which, by the way, does not make any sense. There's a whole freaking song. Right. <laughs> and it's uncomfortable. Yeah. There's a whole song. explain how this came to be, but it doesn't make any sense within the context of the Phantom it's of the Opera. uncomfy. He runs away. Okay. Whatever. I'm not even going to get into that. It's a duet between Christine and Phantom, and they're just talking about that night. About how they were hooking up together. And it's <laughs> uncomfy. And it's long. And it's annoying. And what this this play, this play, this musical does to Raul is also awful. So Raul wasn't the best man in the whole world in the Phantom No, the but opera. he was better but than the Phantom. He was a Phantom. good guy. He was a nice person. He was a nice guy. Nice guys don't always finish last. <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, they take Raul and they make him a drunk with lots of debts to pay, and he does not like their son and does not want to play with him, and he doesn't like Christine either. So this whole thing happens. Raul and the Phantom make a bet. Wait, does Raul know that it's not his son, and that's why he's become this way? No, I don't think he finds out until the very end. Okay, well, I think they should have had that where Raoul knows, and that's because why. that would have like made his character make sense. Yeah. Hmm. See, you should have written Love Never. Andrew Days. Lloyd Webber needs to hit me up, <laughs> <laughs> and he needs to be he needs to be like Julia. I need you to be my writing assistant. Mm. 
because I can write, but you can make my writing make sense. (laughs) (laughs) I love you, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Please don't hurt me. (laughs) Um, But my Instagram is at JuliaMD214. So... The Phantom and Raul make a bet that if Christine performs um, at this at the Coney Island like stage, whatever she's doing, if she performs for him, then she is the Phantom. And if she doesn't perform, then the Phantom will pay all of Raul's debts off. And this bet go. is so stupid. Which, why on earth would you bet your wife against some <laughs> creepy magic dude who you know has killed people? This is what I, this is like what I was talking about the other day: is like people treating wives as property, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, so the story is awful. At the very end, everyone knows that Gustav is the Phantom Son, and they and Meg, who is also in this story, and what they did with her is bad. Um, she has a crush on the Phantom. More than a crush, she is more wants- than a crush. More than a like like. Da, 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 da. Okay. So <laughs> Meg, something a bunch of stuff happens. I don't want to spoil everything, but she takes Gustav to the edge of the water and she's holding this child hostage and this ordeal goes down and everyone's there and she has a gun because she's about to kill herself and the phantom talks her out of killing herself using all of his nice guy words and he's like oh you're great you're a wonderful performer meg and she's all fine and then she shoots christine accidentally and she dies i also predict i also predicted that christine was gonna die so that's how it ends, where she dies. And Gustav runs away with the Phantom and not his father. I mean, no, the Phantom is his father. Well, but he's been raised by Raoul Yeah, his but Raoul life. hates him. So I True. would also run away with the Phantom, Fair who enough. actually likes me, and we share some common interests. Does Gustav know the Phantom is his father? Yes, yes, yeah. she tells him. She tells him right before she dies. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because, like... Gusto, Gustav, Gusto. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he um has this like mini adventure in with the Phantom in the catacombs or whatever, True. Or yeah, wherever yeah. there are. He's the freak and show, he's but... like, "Wow, this guy is great. I love this guy. Ha! Uh-huh. I wish he was my dad." <laughs> True. Yeah, I forgot about that part. <laughs> so, like, you know, I would run away with the Phantom too. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so strange that. The, the guy who's raised him his whole life just goes home with no wife and no son. Well, he didn't like him. Paid. He didn't like him anyway. His debts are paid, so everything's fine. Oh Everyone God. gets a happy ending. Uh, <laughs> I don't like the show. No. So, usually we talk about favorite songs and if we'd play a role. But I know, Julia, do you have a role that you'd want to play? Um, No. Okay, cool. I <laughs> don't really know either. I, I guess I'd say Christine, but I don't even want to be her. Um. Nah. Uh, yeah. Know. Yeah. So th- there's like one saving grace in this whole show, and it's some of the music. Not all of the songs are great, but there are a couple really good ones in there that I enjoy. Um, "Till I S- Hear You Sing" is like the opening, like Phantom solo. Um, it's like a music of the night kind of moment, but I don't know. It's it's, it's a really good song. I like that one. Um, and the Coney Island like opener, uh, like that. It's when the set changes and they're at Coney Island. Mm-hmm. It's so cool in person. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a carousel on stage mm-hmm. and a whole bunch of circus performers, like people spinning fire and like people walking on stilts. And it's like circusy and it's cool and I like it. But that's kind of the only thing that saves it. Yeah. You, I mean, go see it once just to experience what it is. But like, why would you... If somebody... I think we're talking pretty bad about it right now. So, like, I don't think anybody would want to waste their money. I, I say, if you're interested in the show, go to YouTube and watch clips of it. Mm-hmm. I, I, there are, and and there if, are a couple clips of it. And if you don't yeah. like that, then don't go see it. Go to the YouTube channel, The Show Must Go On. Mm-hmm. And they have, like, clips from the... The, uh, the one that we were talking about. Yeah. The one that I own on DVD. Yeah, like, high-quality clips. Yeah, and it's really There's nice. also a couple bootlegs on there. Yes, there are. But I, I think the bootlegs that we found were from the... The London, the production, London production, which, which is, is very different. I've been told is not as good. Yeah. Like, whatsoever. Compared we, we to, like, the newer We just watched the beginning versions. of it, and it was completely different. It yeah. was really strange. 
So yeah. That's that, it. That's it. <laughs> um, that's all for Waving Through a Musical Window. Ding. Ding. Thank you to Anchor for sponsoring Pop Culturing My Best Friend. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free to use, which is always a plus in my mind. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Creators can make money from their podcasts with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. I know that we have absolutely loved our experience using this platform. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. We took a break, even though I forgot to say we were taking a break, (laughs) but we are back now and we are going to review Cars. Oh, Cars. Oh, Cars. What a movie. Um, here's a synopsis. While traveling to California to race against the King, played by Richard Petty, and Chick Hicks, played by Michael Keaton, for the Piston Cup Championship, Lightning McQueen, played by Owen Wilson, becomes lost after find after falling out of his trailer in a run downtown called Radiator Springs. While there, he slowly befriends the town's odd residents, including Sally, played by Bonnie Hunt, Doc Hudson, played by Paul Newman, and Mater, played by Larry the Cable Guy. When it comes time for him to leave, the championship is no longer his top priority. Right. Yep. So that is Cars. That is Cars. <laughs> Indeed. What to say about Cars? So many things. We have so many questions. We could talk about this movie for hours. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you want to get just right into it? Yeah. All right. So, the intro to Cars. Speed. I am speed. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, right away, that is, like, super iconic. Iconic. It's a black black screen, and all you hear is speed. <laughs> I am speed. And you just know you're watching Cars. Oh, yeah. I We watch this movie with, caption on, with captions on. Yeah, yeah. And watching it with captions on, we notice, like, so many more things that we never noticed in this movie. Yeah. Like, ever before. Like, even in the intro, I noticed he was, like, talking about breakfast at one point, and I never noticed that before. Really? Yeah. yeah, there were lots of jokes that I'd never picked up on until... And then there's one interesting fact Ooh. that I have written in my notes to talk yes. about that I am hype. That I don't know if anyone knows it, but we learned it for the first time. And we've been watching Cars for years, so... What if, like, we're just dumb? And, no, ev- and no this one... is a common no, thing. No, no, no. Okay, I'll, I'll explain why we're not dumb when we get there. <laughs> so, my first note, before we even get into the story, is do cars have car insurance or life insurance? Every time I watch Cars, this is the question that goes through my mind. I think the answer is yes, because with Progressive, you can bundle... Oh my gosh, you are not (laughs) about to do a Progressive ad on on the podcast. (laughs) Progressive is never going to sponsor us now. No! (laughs) I'm giving them free promotion! (laughs) I don't know if Progressive have life insurance, actually. Um, (laughs) So, we get into the movie, it's a race. So, Lightning McQueen is racing um, a blue car and a green car. Well, there's other cars, but nobody cares about those. But yeah, those are the the three main cars. Um, One of them is known as the King. He is, like, the top racer. He's he's sponsored by Dynaco. Yes, which is important in the Cars universe. Oh, so important. The green guy is Chick Hicks, (laughs) and he is annoying, and I do not like him. He's annoying. Lightning McQueen's annoying. He's an old racer, so he's been in the game for a while. Kachiga! <laughs> and Lightning McQueen is the rookie. So, it's like, it's like it, the big the big deal is the race between them. Like, everyone wants to see who's going to win. And one one thing that I heard in, I guess someone said it in, uh, it's one of the announcer guys. Yeah. Says, oil pressure instead of blood pressure. Oh, yeah. But later in the movie, um, the, the hippie van, Fillmore is his name, He's selling, he, he mentions that he's selling organic oil. No, he's selling organic fuel. But then he says oil later. I, like, wrote this down specifically because he said oil. So then I'm wondering, huh? Well, because, okay, I'm not a car kind of gal. I don't know anything about cars. If my boyfriend l- listens to this, he might be very upset with me if I get this mm-hmm. wrong. But I thought, like, gas 
and in a car and oil in a car are two different things. That's what I thought too. So the oil represents their blood pressure, obviously. Yeah, oil. I'm like almost 100 percent sure. But when Fillmore mentions things. oil later, it's almost as like if it's a drink or like a food or something. So this universe already has so many questions attached to it. Is it two different things? I'd. Who knows? I'm offending every car person out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So th- this next point is what I was talking about earlier. It's insane. So they're introducing the racers, the, the announcers, and the blue guy, he's known as the king. The Even king. in the synopsis that Julia got. In the synopsis. The king. On merchandise, he's the king. The king. The That's blue car has just always been the king to But me. he has a name. And we only learn this because we had the captions on. His name is Strip Weathers. What? Why? He has a name. <gasps> but why is that his name? Right. I mean, it kind of fits him. But still, what in the world? I've gone my whole life not knowing that this car Ooh, had a Oh my name. gosh. His name is the king. <laughs> <laughs> so that is my fact to share with you. The blue car has a name. Yep. Okay. Um. So. Oh, I have a question. All right. So, if the tires are the feet of the car, does that mean they switch out their feet, feet a lot, or, or their are shoes? their shoes? You'd think the little metal things, like in the middle, yeah. would be the feet, and the tires are the shoes. We're gonna offend every car person with this You're so entire right. podcast. The little metal thing. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> as long as you understand, it doesn't matter. So what I wrote is, what are the cars doing in human terms? Are they running or are they driving cars? Like, is this like a NASCAR kind of thing? But if they be shoes, then they must be running. They're running because the cars are sentient. Like, it wouldn't be a NASCAR thing because they're driving all the time. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So I guess they're just running and that's the whole premise of the movie. Yeah. Strange. Okay. So It's so weird. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing that happens is Lightning McQueen, he's kind of a jerk in this first scene. He ignores no, his No, he's crew. a jerk in the entire movie. You're right, but he's exceptionally a jerk right now. And he ignores going in for a pit stop because he wants to win, so he skips over and then he's in first place. Well, right before he's about to win, his tires blow. And I wrote, his tires blow. What would that be in human terms? Are just the soles of his shoes just falling off? I guess so. <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess that would make sense. We've, we've established that they're shoes now, so. Yeah. I guess that, that is what that means. Yeah, they're right. shoes. They're shoes. So, mm-hmm. after Lightning McQueen's tires blow, um, Chick Hicks and Strip Weathers <laughs> catch up to him, <laughs> and they all have a three-way tie. But they count Lightning McQueen's tongue. Yeah, I really don't think that should have been counted. Like, plot-wise, okay, okay, it makes sense. Yeah, but, like, that is so dumb. yeah. Because he would have lost. They, it would have been just a tie between them. It should have been a tie. Yeah. That is... It's so Interesting. dumb. It's so dumb. So, the they're all done with the race. Everyone's just chilling and talking. Um, do you have anything coming up soon? Um, no, the next thing I have is about the twins. Oh, that's my next note as oh. well. <laughs> um, so, okay. his biggest fans are these twins. <laughs> these twins. And they flash their headlights at him. Yes. Um, you and then they are escorted away. Insert sexual in- you window here. <laughs> but here's what I have to say about this. They're just flashing their headlights. But everybody has headlights. Right. So is everybody just flashing everybody all the time? And when they're driving and- at night. Yeah, and hey. also, why does Lightning McQueen not have headlights? Is this just a race car thing? But Doc has headlights, and he was a race car. Right. Also, I looked at none of the... Okay, I, I looked back at it. None of the other race cars that I can remember in the movie have headlights, except for Doc. Mm-hmm. But in real life, race cars have headlights. Right. As far as I've seen. And then also, later in the movie, Lightning McQueen gets told to turn his headlights on and Mm so wait hold on while i'm on this tangent i have another note about headlights somewhere (laughs) yeah so are you born with headlights and you can get them detached or are headlights a cosmetic surgery that a car has to get whoa (laughs) well i guess 
I mean, maybe he's race cars are like a different race, a different race but car. Doc has headlights, and he was a race car. Oh. Yeah, that's weird. Because I got that too, but then I was like, no, because Doc has headlights. Interesting. I don't like this question. <laughs> okay, so next, um, it is announced that they have the three way tie. Oh my gosh! And then they Lightning McQueen. He was challenged by by Chick, like, whoever makes it to California first gets to, like, hang out with Dinoco, and maybe they'll pick them as their next sponsor. Yeah, because so, the king is retiring, yes. and Dinoco's going to need a new face of the company. Mm-hmm. Which, I don't get that. They get, well, no, never mind. It makes sense. Okay. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> on his way out, uh, Lightning's hoping to get there, like, soon. But he has to meet with his sponsors first. And his sponsors are Rusty. Rusty. And the commercial makes it... It's medicated bumper ointment. So it sounds like it's some kind of butt cream or something. But what is rust? Because it's all over the car. Rust it's on their faces is and everything. acne. Julia thinks it's acne. It's and I think that's acne. an interesting theory. Um, it's funnier when you think of it as, like, butt cream. But, like, still. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... Well, hey, you know, Rusty's Mm -hmm. is a big brand, and their medicated bumper ointment could just be one part of the brand. True. Right. That does make sense. So that cream is just specifically for the bumper, but (laughs) they specialize in rust, which Which is is car acne. acne. Oh, (laughs) I like that. Okay. So at um, the same while he's meeting with his people, um, the the sponsor of Rusty's what is his name Fred? I no, no Fred's the like the really rusty car. Yeah. So the sponsor <laughs> of Rusty's says, um, Lightning McQueen says first, race cars don't need headlights because the track is always lit. And he says, well, so is my brother, but he still needs headlights. <gasps> what? <laughs> Did you not hear that? I don't think so. <laughs> I wrote this down as soon as I heard it because I thought it was so funny. So that means there's car alcohol or car drugs or some kind of yeah. car something. But yeah. what would that be? Because they only drink gas. I don't know. What else can you put in your car? I don't know. <laughs> well, there might be something in that organic fuel. <laughs> oh, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> so do you have any other notes about um, this part? No, it was it just kind of like led into my headlights thing. He was like, I was like, wait, so do you have to buy headlights or is it a cosmetic surgery yeah, or whatever? Yeah. And I wrote down and Lightning McQueen is a jerk. True. <laughs> so <laughs> so sucks. Lightning McQueen gets in Mac. I'll have notes about that later. Believe me, the whole Mac <laughs> situation is a big old question in my head. Um, so Lightning McQueen is in the trailer. And they're leaving, and they're going to California. And Life is a highway. highway. I'm gonna ride it all, all night, night long. long. Yes, iconic song. Right uh, here. That's the only Rascal Flat song I will listen to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're traveling, and they. Here, okay, here's the note that I have written. <laughs> so this, I've combined some things from later in the movie all in one because it's all just leading. Into yeah, I the feel same like this. Question. A whole section's gonna be kind of all over the place. Yeah, we just have so many questions. Cars is weird. <laughs> okay, so Mac. Mac has a trailer that can detach. What is it supposed to be in human terms? His butt? A backpack? Lightning is <gasps> in the trailer. What if it's one of those baby carriers? A baby carrier. <laughs> but but wait. Later, um, when when they discover Lightning McQueen after he's fallen asleep and he's fallen out of the trailer, once they discover that he's gone when he arrives in California, he opens his trailer and everyone gasps. And he said, did I forget to wipe my mud flap? Oh, yeah. As if it's his butt. Ah, how? I don't, I don't know. Lightning McQueen was in there. but Was but- Lightning McQueen up Mac's butt? <laughs> But it can detach, so his butt can come off. Exactly. <laughs> I'm so confused. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this is a cartoon. <laughs> this is a cartoon. Right. We get it. We get it. But the cartoon <laughs> needs to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't... Don't quote me on this, but I remember watching something about cars one time okay. and how this movie was purely made just to sell merchandise. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Toy cars and that kind of thing. Yeah. So as far as I know, I or as far as I think, 
I don't think any thought was really put into this film. They're just sentient cars. Yeah. I guess. But I don't care because I'm going to dissect the entire movie. Yeah. If anyone has any ideas about the whole Mac thing, like, please let us know. Yes. Give us your opinion on cars in our latest Instagram post. Yes, please. We, we would, would like to know, love to hear. Give your us opinions. your weird car questions as well. Maybe or we your can try to figure conspiracy it out. Conspiracy theories. Yes, we would like to hear all of it. Yes. Okay, so Mac starts falling asleep on the road, and mm-hmm. this little minivan comes by, and he goes, me 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 me, and I don't understand why he's the only car that makes noises like that. <laughs> it's me. I'm the minivan. <laughs> Um, so Mac is falling asleep because lightning would not let him stop at the truck stop. What a jerk. Right. Gosh. So he is falling asleep on the road and these cool electric, maybe, cars Uh. come by. They're all glowy and they're mean. You're super cool. Yeah. And they see Mac is falling asleep and they're, they're like, uh oh, we got a dozer or whatever. Whatever they call it. I don't remember. They say something like that. Um, and they start, like, playing, like, soft, like, lullaby music. They play, it's like, uh, what's his name? Kenny Ken- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Mac starts falling asleep. And they start pushing him towards the edge of the road. And they're on a they're bridge. They're on a bridge. So Mac could have fallen off and died. Why are these cars trying to kill Mac? I don't know. What is their deal? I don't know. But they're just supposed to be, like, cool, like, hip dudes. Awful. And then right after that, Lightning McQueen falls out of his butt. <laughs> right. So Lightning wakes up on the middle of the road backwards and he starts like trying to find out where he is and he's like, oh, the interstate. I gotta get to the interstate. So he's I can on the interstate to though. California. So he like gets himself all turned around and he goes down Route 66. Here's my thing is that when he was when he came out of Mac, <laughs> he was on the interstate. Yeah. He should have just kept going. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, that guy kind of looks like Mac and gotten off. Mm -hmm. No, you stay on the interstate. Great. So he starts going down Route 66 and he passes the sheriff of Route 66. And he be zooming. Yeah, he he's speeding. He's going really fast. So the sheriff starts driving after him and the sheriff is really old. So he starts making sounds that kind of sound like he starts. Gunshots. He starts backfiring. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Lightning McQueen says he's shooting at me. And the first thought that comes to my mind is, do cars have guns? Do cars have guns? Are there car guns? I mean, I get like tanks and stuff. Yeah, but he's not a tank. He's a police car. Police cars don't have guns attached to them. <laughs> what are the hands of the cars? Right. How would he have guns? I mean, okay, in Cars 2, they do have guns because they're spies. Yeah. But, like, they're, like, spy cars, like you'd see in spy movies. Well, maybe the police cars have a similar thing. We just didn't see it in this movie. Yeah. I guess maybe. I don't, I don't know. So, while the cop is chasing, what's his face? Lightning. Lightning. Yeah. (laughs) Owen Wilson. Wow. Wow. Really, he's chasing him. He goes into Radiator Springs, then Mm -hmm. a bunch of chaos ensues. So much chaos that, like, was not necessary and could have very easily have been avoided if he just pulled over. Yeah, he could have just stopped and, like, stopped for the police car who's chasing him and who he thinks is shooting him. Um, Well, okay, whatever. So, Lightning McQueen crashes into some barbed wire fence, which wraps around um, the statue of the Radiator Springs founder, Stanley. And I wrote, Stanley has a memorial. How did he die? How, How did, did he cars die? die? <laughs> um, well, as we see later in the movie, Doc is a doctor. Right. And he is a doctor of internal combustion. Which is interesting in itself. So my theory is that before Doc came to... Because we found out that Radiator Springs was founded in what... 1909? Something like that. 1904, 1909. Yeah, something like that. In the single digits. And Doc came around the late 1950s, Mm -hmm. which I'll get to the reasoning behind that in a minute. But, um, like, I think that he died of internal combustion, and Doc was just so moved by his story (laughs) that he went, 
<laughs> and got his school to medical school. <laughs> but there's a university for car doctors. <gasps> there are car universities. <laughs> this is just whole new questions that we were not <laughs> expecting. Car school. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that, we can't talk about this. We'll just go on forever. Okay. okay. Um, so, um, lightning drags the Stanley statue through the town and it breaks all of the road. Yeah. Um, so. It's a mess. That is that. Um, lightning McQueen, he passes out and he wakes up in the morning in jail. Car yep. jail. Car jail. <laughs> um, and he wakes up and he sees that he's got a car what would that represent? Is that just like um? It could be handcuffs. Uh, either handcuffs or oh, what's that thing when you're on house arrest? Oh yeah, 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 the like foot thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't remember what it was called. I had it in my head, and then you said it, and then I forgot. No. Um, Shoot. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it makes him unable to move. Well. Oh well. Okay. <laughs> So, We're not here to answer questions. We're only here to ask them. So, Maynard comes by, and this is the first time we meet him, and he has to take Lightning McQueen to court. Car court. Car court. Which exists. Yes. Um And the sheriff is like, okay, tow him down to... Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Does Mater's hook go up his butt? His butt. Because <laughs> he, like... You know, he hooks him, and then he goes, oh, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Like. I think it does. But in human terms, that does not make sense. <laughs> you no don't, one does that. You don't. And you have to walk backwards. I don't know. Not, uh, I don't know. I guess in real life, it'd just be the equivalent of him putting handcuffs on him. But, like, what? I, or, I don't know. Cars. Okay. Yay. So, car court happens. Car court. And. Doc is like, he's a racer. I don't want him here. I know his kind. Mm -mm, No, Mm -mm, get out. He's out. So, Lightning McQueen, he's just like, okay, cool. I'm free. I don't have to stay here any longer. Yeah. But then, Sally. Holy Portia. Sally. (laughs) She is an attorney. And she comes in. And Lightning McQueen thinks she's from his... He's like, this yeah. part makes me so uncomfortable. I bro, Lightning is so creepy to Sally. He's disgusting. It's nasty. The it's... way he talks to me is bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> I hate it. I so hate it. She she's obviously picking up on like what he's putting down and she's not having any of it. And she's she starts talking to the radiator springs people and she's like, Oh, how are you guys this morning? And like and he's like, What? She's from here? She's my uh, fiance. And Mater <laughs> says, Oh, she's my fiance. And then Lightning McQueen's like, What? And he's like, No, I'm just kidding. She only likes me from my body. <laughs> that was <just> so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, um oh, um, this is the okay. So Sally, she basically she she talks the whole town into making lightning stay and fix the roads because it's like the, the only way people can get to their shops. Like yeah. otherwise they'll all go out of business. Yeah. So he has to stay and he has to meet Bessie. Yeah. Now I have questions about get Bessie, but first I have to get into this. Mater is talking to Lightning about how he'd love to drag Bessie around and fix whatever, and he says. I'd give my left two lug nuts. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> she just breathed in all of her hair. <laughs> I thought this line was so funny because I never noticed it before. Yeah, same. Like, hmm. I love that's some, some That's something to think about. <laughs> so, it's my funny. next question is, why isn't Bessie alive? Bessie yeah. is a vehicle as well as them, the one that has to be pulled around. Yes. She's still something that has four wheels. Like, what qualifies as a car or like a? Yes, do you I have, have written down. I what? have written down. So, are the different types of cars different races? And what does what makes like the tractor cows or the one car bug like different from like right? Yeah. You know what I mean. Yes. Like, so, when what? when we go to the tractor scene, we will talk about that more in depth because I have notes about that as well. So, Lightning McQueen, he does not want to be attached to Bessie. So, as soon as Mater takes his boot off, he speeds out of there. And he's like, nope. 
none of that for me. And he's trying to leave. And he breaks down because he runs out of gas. And he's very confused. And he mm-hmm. stops right next to the sheriff in Sally. They were waiting for him to leave. And Lightning McQueen is like, you know, like, how did I run out of gas? And they said, we siphoned your gas while you were passed out. Well, how we have come... they remove his gas? We have come, like, to... What's it called? The agreement or the, the agreement. conclusion? Yeah, the conclusion that gas is... A drink. Because they talk about um, Flo's Cafe. They talk about it later that, like, oh, I can hook you up with something to drink. So yeah. we discuss that it's, like, her cafe is some kind of bar or, like, something like that. Yeah. And if it's a drink, did they drain his pee? Like, how did they get rid of it? Yeah. And also, it could be, like, blood or, like, in any of the things, food. Like, how did they get it out of him (laughs) while he was sleeping? Cars. No, it wouldn't be blood. The oil is the blood. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Right. But Mm. it's their fuel. Yeah. It's like an energy drink. It's like our food or, like, something that we would survive on. Yeah. Cars. Okay. Cars. So... Um, um, Lightning McQueen gets sent back, and he is like, attached I to Bessie I gotta be again. in California. No. So he's attached to Bessie, and he has to start fixing the roads. Um, as he is attempting to fix the roads, the first customers come by oh. that Radiator Springs has seen in a really long time. And there are these two little minivans, and they come by. And I didn't know their names. I didn't catch their names until we watched it with captions. Their names are Van and Minnie. And I think that's just so cute. <laughs> What a perfect couple. Van and Minnie. They are meant to be together. Yeah. Well, um, do you have any notes about Van and Minnie? Um, I have... Oh. I don't know why I wrote the sound, but I wrote... So his lightning bolt is a sticker. Right. How does he shine it? The Kachow thing? I guess he's just, like... It's like a reflective sticker, and he's trying to, like, get it, like, in the light. So it, like, shines, Oh, okay. Still. Okay. Um, no, I have a lot of things about, um, Ramon. Ramon. <laughs> yeah. Ramon is the car that owns the body shop, which I guess in real life would be, like, some kind of tattoo parlor or yeah, something around Yeah, body art shop. equals tattoos. I have that written down. Okay. Um, and he, since we saw him last, has changed his color. Yes, he has a different, in every different scene that he's in, that's, like, you know, like, not in the same day. Every different day, he has a different color. Yeah, so, like... Is the the color their skin? Are they changing their skin? Oh, yeah. Is just Ramon just adding new tattoos every day? But you'd think that it, like, you know, it'd just be different designs on the same color car. No, but he changes his yeah. entire, his entire color. color. That's that, Yeah, that's really weird. I never mm-hmm. thought about that before. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, I also have a question about Ramon. What is he doing when he lifts up his tires like that? Oh, he's showing them his tattoo oh in where the sun don't shine (laughs) okay nice yeah cool um yeah so basically they're just like bombarding the the visitors who are just trying to find the interstate which why is everybody having such a hard time finding the interstate the interstate you can tell it's the interstate what (laughs) what um anyway so they eventually pass by lightning mcqueen and he's like i can help you find the interstate and they're like really <laughs> and he's like well no but i'm a famous race car and i'm being held hostage here by all these people and i really need you to help me and they just stare at him and they lock themselves yes <laughs> are they locking in their organs so we can't steal them like what in the world <laughs> i guess so so does that mean there is a car's black market for car organs (laughs) well in cars too they sell parts they do that's a big part of the movie i do not know that selling they're selling um like specific parts for specific cars that aren't being made anymore and you can see how they catch the villain is that he's one of those cars that aren't being made anymore and all of his parts are in the backgrounds of his anonymous videos and you can see them that he has a stockpile of parts for his car I need to watch this movie because, okay, I haven't seen Cars 3 and I seen Cars 2 once, but I only saw it like when it first came out. So yeah. I remember absolutely nothing from it. So Cars 2, Cars 2, there's a lot of things in it that are like, that's another debate. We need to watch Cars 2 huh. and Cars 3. Ah. Maybe we'll do a Cars series someday. 
No. <laughs> no. You can stand more of our questions. Okay. So the the minivans leave obviously terrified. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything after that? No. Okay. So my next question is about the doctor scene. Oh yeah. So Lightning McQueen is like, I gotta get this done. So he like speed runs paving the road and it looks awful. Mm -hmm. And Mater comes in to Doc's place and he's like, He's done. He's like, What? <laughs> So he comes yeah. out there and it's awful. So then Doc challenges Lightning to a race. And he's like, if you beat me, you can go and I will pave the road myself. But if I beat you, then you have to, like, scrape the road off and do it my way. Yeah. So they go to their race. And Lightning ends up in a in, bunch of cactus. And cacti. Which, cacti. how it hurts yeah. him, I don't know. But cars. Okay, so... Cars. Um, yeah, so then he has to scrape off the road mm -hmm. and repave it. And he does this, like, all night. And the next morning... He's got half of it done. He has half of it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, he goes to see Doc. And Doc is... I didn't know he was a real doctor until the last time we watched this movie. <laughs> I don't know why my dumb brain did not pick up on that. Uh. But... Doc is a real doctor, and he he has the sheriff up on, like, his table, I guess. And the sheriff this whole time, as lightning comes in, he's like, oh, you're getting a nice view, like, down there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to go into that. It's so funny. I mean, Doc is a doctor of internal combustion. <gasps> yeah. Which, and yeah, the sheriff is having issues. And he's having internal combustion issues, as we saw when he was chasing after Lightning McQueen. Yeah. Uh, making gun sounds. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, um, um, that was, that, that was the only I, ha I have after that. So, he does some things, like, during the day. He just, like, sees everyone and, like, what they do, basically. Yeah, and then, um, the sheriff says that Mater can look after, what's his, Lightning! Lightning. Why do I keep forgetting his name? <laughs> I'm so brain dead right my, now. My, my, no, the only thing I have, like, during this day, um, is why doesn't Red, which is the fire truck, speak? Red only cries. <laughs> we, or Lily, did a lot of research on every oh character in this yes. movie. <laughs> um, I found out that Flo, um, who owns the diner, and Ramon are married. Mm -hmm. And they have a whole backstory together, which I had yeah. no idea. So Ramon was already working in Radiator Springs. And Flo was in, like, a troop of showgirls. And they all came to Radiator Springs and, like, I think... Their agent or someone broke out, like, broke down outside of town, so they had to stay there for the night. Mm -hmm. And all of the girls were going to get, like, tattoos, I guess, from Ramon while he was there because they thought it was cute. And Ramon refused to do any work on the flow because she was perfect already. And from that night, ever since, she stayed there. And Aww. that's why she lives in Radiator Springs. And they're married. I love them. Yeah. It's, it's like, a really cute story. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, so cute. Oh, I my know. God. Why is Cars making me have feelings? <laughs> what um, the heck? We learned Sa Sally's backstory a little later. Um, I don't know why Luigi and Guido are there. We don't know, like, anything about them, really, besides that they have some kind of relatives in Italy. Yeah. Um, and then who else did I find about? Uh, we knew that Doc came in the 50s after his yes. racing incident. And that's what I will, I will get to that in a minute. So, because Mater is being put in charge mm -hmm. of Lightning. Lightning. <laughs> I keep forgetting his name. Wait, hush. He takes him out at the night and they go cow tipping. Tractor tipping. Tractor tipping. But what? Why are what? the tractors people too? Why are they cars? Boats and planes are people. And they're not even close to being cars. Yeah. Tractors have wheels. Uh huh. What in the world is this universe? Cars. And then. Then beetles or bugs, whatever. They are they are insects. Yes. And then sometimes they're people too. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. And mm -hmm. then like I think I've seen car birds before. I don't know. Please answer this. Like, if you can come up with any reason why they the tractors like you'd think that tractors would be farmers. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Next. Um, um go to, you go. Ahead. Um, yeah, so 
I don't know what that was, but Lightning McQueen, <laughs> <laughs> Lightning McQueen uh, ends up staying in the Cozy Cone Motel because yes. Sally invites him. They have a cute little flirty moment, whatever. Mm-hmm. I still find Lightning disgusting, but whatever. Yeah, and they then they go, go on a date. A date. Where uh, she reveals her back there. She was, like, a big-time, like, lawyer in the city. And she's like, I'm done with this. I want something, like, chill. So she comes to Radio Springs. She me. falls in love with the view um, from up by the hotel. And she just, like, wishes that she could have seen it in its heyday. Yeah. So. And then. Yeah. That's about it. Um, And then somehow. I don't remember how. But Lightning McQueen finds out that Doc is a race car. Or was a yes. race car. He wanders into his old shed. And. <laughs> Yes. We find out that... I'm very excited about this fact. Um, We find out that Doc was the fabulous Hudson Hornet Mm -hmm. in the early 1950s. And he had a terrible crash in 1954, which ended his career. Fun fact! This is a really fun fact. The fabulous Hudson Hornet is a real NASCAR race car. Yeah. From the 1950s. It's really cool. It's interesting. I I never knew that before. Me either, but I accidentally clicked something on Wikipedia and it brought that up. (laughs) So, um, Doc won three Piston Cups and Lightning goes to tell everyone they think he's crazy. Yeah. Um, And Doc is like not happy with him Mm because he's been in his stuff. He's seen all this like race car thing. And he's like, now he's all like, oh, can you teach me? Like, show me your ways. Yeah. So... That's a debacle. But Lightning ends up fixing the, road. the full road. And to surprise Sally, yeah. he fixes all the neon lights, which not even gonna get into that. He, Is like, he a car electrician? Who I knows? don't know. He fixes the neon lights, he goes to everybody's stores mm-hmm. and shops and stuff and buys something from everybody. Which is nice, I guess. Yeah. He gets a new paint job from Ramon, which he- We'll get into that later. <laughs> uh, but everyone's having a nice time, like, going down the road. Um, yeah, they're having a little dance. <laughs> That's <laughs> um, And then all of a sudden, all of those paparazzi and Mac show up to take Lightning McQueen away back to California. Yeah. And there, there's, like, a really sad, like, moment between Sally and Lightning. And she's like, oh, you should go. And he's like, but I don't want to. But he has to go. And they take him away to California, and they find out that Doc was the one who called them to take him away because mm-hmm. he was salty about the whole incident earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he leaves. Um, he's getting ready for the race or whatever, and he's not really happy about it. And mm-hmm. he's on. Do you have anything in between here? Mm-mm. Okay, so skipping around a little bit. He's on the track. Oh, oh. no, I'll save that for the end, actually. Okay. He's on the track, ready to go, um, and he's, like, doing his thing, and he hears in, like, his headset that, like, he has a crew chief now, and it is Doc Hudson. He's come back. The the town has convinced him that Lightning is good and that, like, they all miss him, and Tomato didn't say goodbye, so they had to go. So all of his friends are there. Luigi and Guido are his pit crew now, so they're going to take care of him when he actually does decide to get his wheels fixed and stuff. Um, And... Basically what happens is this is a tiebreaker race between the three of them. Lightning's doing good. Um, the Dynaco guy is doing good. But then Chick comes up behind the Dynaco guy and he makes him crash. And Lightning is like two feet away from the finish line. Yeah. And he stops. And he goes all the way back to push the Dynaco guy. What was his name? Uh, the King. Strip Weathers. <laughs> no. He pushes him. To the finish line. And yeah. that's, like, a really nice act of, like... What an iconic fi- moment. Yeah. It was really nice. <laughs> so, Chick wins the Piston Cup. And but he nobody gets up- cares. Yeah. Everyone's upset with him. And uh, the the king, he is being rolled back to his people by lightning. And one of his people, I think it's his wife, she it says... Is, yeah. Thank the manufacturer you're alive. So there's a car god. A car god. The manufacturer. Which also brings me to my question I was going to ask earlier. How do cars have babies? <laughs> the manufacturer. Like, what in the world? So many questions. So many. If you have any theories on the manufacturer, I guess how cars have babies, let us know. Cars. Um, cars. <laughs> um... And my next point is um, the the Dynaco people ask Lightning if he wants to be their next sponsor. And he's like, no, 
I'm going to stay with Rusty's, even though he didn't really like them earlier. Now he's like, he's had a change of heart and everything's all right. Mm-hmm. So, but he does ask the Dinoco guys for one favor. He asks if Mater can take a ride in the helicopter. So he's inside a helicopter. the helicopter, which is, is also, also sentient. sentient. What? And he's flying. And <sighs> cars. cars. <laughs> That's all I what? have. Um, that's basically the end of the movie, really. Yeah. Oh, all right. That's I it. think that's it for movie review. That's Cars. Please try to come up with some kind of theories or let us know what you have opinions on any of this stuff. Yes, please. All right. All right. We're going to take a break mm-hmm. and we'll be back with Sleepover Games. Ding. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. So for Sleepover Games this week, I posted a thing on our Instagram to Mm -hmm. ask you all to give us your best would you rather. Yes. I love them. And thank you so much for answering it. Um, Yeah. Let's get into it. There's some good ones. This is very exciting. Would you rather live off of your favorite fast food place Mm -hmm. or your favorite restaurant? Oh, that's difficult. Okay. I know my answer. Mm. So I'll go because I think this was an easy question. I, I think I've just come up with mine too. Um, I would choose favorite restaurant because, you know, fast food's like unhealthy. Right. You know, typically. Well, restaurants, they have unhealthy, but they also have healthy. So if mm. you're feeling like crap and you don't want to eat unhealthy things, you can get a salad. Here was my uh, reasoning. I also picked restaurant. Because I like the Cheesecake Factory, and they have everything. They, I didn't even think about the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> like you have options forever. Yeah. No, I would also choose the Cheesecake Factory. I don't know what my favorite restaurant is, but I would choose the same. Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> okay. Would you rather have to wear the same outfit or have to eat the same meals every day for the rest of your life? Mm, I, think... I say outfit because I don't care. Yeah, I think outfit as well, even though I really like clothes and stuff, but... I couldn't just, like, eat one food forever. Uh-uh. I, I, like, I think that's worse. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next. Would you rather never be able to shower or never be able to brush your teeth again? Oh. Gross. I say brush your teeth because brushing your teeth does not include swishing with mouthwash. True. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd pick that as well. <laughs> showering there's no way around <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you're just stinky yeah okay would you rather live on a sailboat or in an rv um i pick rv because i hate the water i want an rv in general that'd be cool like i think it'd be so cool one summer to like rent an rv and just do like a whole road trip across the country yeah that'd be awesome i oh man i want to do that so bad but <laughs> yeah would you rather Give up music or give up TV? TV, for sure. I mean, I don't really watch much TV anyways, besides, like, the shows you make me watch. Uh, I do, but I would give up TV because I would... I think I'd go insane without I don't music. Think, I, I couldn't live without music because that's my <laughs> career. <laughs> I mean, technically, same. True. Yeah. Yeah. My foot keeps twitching. Okay. <laughs> um, would you rather lose the ability to read or to speak? Um, I guess I'd say read, because I don't really do too much of it anymore, but it's kind of difficult to have classes without being able to read your emails and stuff. I've been thinking about this a lot, and honestly, I don't know, because... Oh, well, now I think about it, Because I was like, well, okay, if I'm gonna do theater, I just gotta speak, but no, I have to read the the script. script. And, like, for me, like, what kind of reading does it count? Like, is reading sheet music out of the question as well? Is that reading? This is a hard one, and honestly, I don't think I can give an answer, because they go hand in hand. Yeah. There's, like, no that way. Is difficult. There's no way you can pick between the two. You're right. All right, what's okay. next? Would you rather have a get-out-of-jail-free card or a key that opens every door? Okay, well, here's my reasoning behind this. I think I'd want a get-out-of-jail-free card. I mean, I know I'm not, like, just in my normal life, I know I wouldn't go into jail or anything, like, weird like that. But if I had a key that could unlock everything, I could end up in jail. Well, I would pick the key, because then you can get out of jail. Oh, you're right! (laughs) Okay, yeah. (laughs) Fair enough, fair enough. The key, the key. Because then you could, like, I don't know, you could do all kinds of things. And then, like, 
You could open any door you wanted to, and you could do anything. Yeah. Like, you could... I don't know. What, what would you do? I don't know. There's not a door I want to unlock, but, like, sometimes I get locked out of my room on accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. That happened before, where I was, like, testing something. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I was doing, but I ended up, like purposefully locking myself out of my bedroom and the only people home were Harrison and I Why? I don't What'd remember do? <laughs> I don't remember I think I was supposed to go to like a sleepover that week and I didn't want Harrison going in my room or something oh but then we couldn't find the key oh so we had to wait for hours until my mom got home. <laughs> <laughs> nice oh um, man. yeah I, I guess I'd also pick the key but yeah, you, you could get out of jail. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Smart. Okay, okay. next. Um, this is the last one. There were a lot, but this is the last one that I picked. Mm-hmm. Um, would you rather be the first to explore a planet or the first to cure a deadly disease? I pick the disease because I do not want to go to space. Same. The idea of space just in itself is terrifying yes i cannot imagine why anyone would ever want to risk their lives to go in a speeding like <laughs> tube of metal into the galaxy I mean, which like... you don't know what's there and you could just float out into space forever and just be lost and that's that's all anyone ever sees of you again i mean i kind of get it but like i would never do it I couldn't. like yeah, the people never who go into space are like wow yeah, congrats, guys, for going into space. Congrats, guys. Yeah. <laughs> congrats okay. on doing the jobs that we don't want to do. Yeah. Okay. So that's the end of Sleepover Games. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't Dang. ask for any questions. I didn't ask for any questions this week because I asked for um feedback and oh. would you rather's. And Did we get any of that? We did. I asked if anybody had any specific movies or musicals they'd like us to do, and after next week, we'll start getting into them, because we have a, I have a really cool plan for next week, mm-hmm. um, so, well, I might sprinkle a little bit in there, but I'll tell you in a minute. Anyway, All right. but Shout yeah, out. thank you so much, and continue to give us feedback and answer the questions on our Instagram yes, story. Yes, um, it's nice to be able to interact with people. Yeah, it's a and lot just, of like, fun. Just in, like, normal life, just, like, people, like, oh, yeah, I like this on the podcast or, like, things like that. It's really weird to, like, hear people, like, they're listening. Yeah. It's so, really nice. Yeah. So continue to like and share. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we played a game on our Instagram today, which I think I'm going to continue this game. Yes. It was really Because fun. it was a lot of fun, um, even though somebody guessed it the first day. <laughs> but basically, um, I will be putting up uh, hints, three hints on our Instagram story to what the movie we're reviewing is, mm-hmm. and you get to guess what it is. And so, um, the first person who guesses what it is, we will give a mega shout out to, and we'll shout out like whatever they want us to, and then we'll have two runner ups. Mm-hmm. So our two runner ups are Madison and Kimberly. Yeah. So good job. I know Madison got it the first day, like right after our winner got yeah. it. Yeah. Like literally <laughs> right after. Really and then Kimberly got it the next day. Yeah. So, um, our main shout out is to Shane, my boyfriend. Um, I swear on everything. I did not she tell did him not. what movie He doesn't we even listen to the podcast, so he might not hear this. He doesn't have time, but he promises he will. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he didn't want me to shout out his private Instagram or anything. He wanted me to shout out, um, <laughs> this Instagram account that he's an admin for called at civil minecraft. And they oh, post yes. Minecraft memes and tips and really it- cool videos, I think. I mean, okay. I follow them and I think it's interesting. And I'm not the big craft, the biggest crafter out the there. Crafter? I'm not the biggest crafter out there, but I find it really interesting. Yeah. And some of their memes are funny. So good and to them for all your Minecraft yes. memes. Yes. And um, he wanted me to also say that they are currently recruiting admins. Hmm. So if you want to make Minecraft memes, go to their Instagram and DM them and be like, hey, I want to make some memes. <laughs> so. You'll be an admin. Fun. Yeah. Okay. He has a lot of fun with it. So. Yeah. Right. It's that's it. epic. So that's it. Uh, next episode is going to be a musical-centric episode. Yeah. It's going to be all about musicals. Very, very And I'm hype. 
we're going to be talking about one of my favorite musicals, one musical that my dream, one of my dream roles comes out of. Mm -hmm. Something I've never seen before, so I'm And we're watching the movie for it. Yeah, so So, it's going to be a musical and the movie of that musical. Yeah. So So look forward to that. I'm really excited. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, thank you for listening. Please go follow us on our Instagram at yes. popcultureingmybff underscore podcast. And don't forget that I also post our episodes on YouTube and SoundCloud. Um, SoundCloud, however, we might have to retire shortly because there is a limit on free uploads. So this might be, if not the last episode, this one will be the last one uploaded onto the SoundCloud. Yeah, so, but we are up on YouTube. Yes. And also, don't forget to send us DMs, um... If you just want to say anything. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so leave an F in the in the comments of our last video, along with your your car's commentary uh, for the SoundCloud, and this, that'll be all. Yes. I think, is that it? I yep. feel like I had something else, but I can't nope, remember. Nope, that's it. Okay, cool. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for listening. Keep an eye out on the Instagram. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us this week on Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Tune in next time when we talk about more stuff and things. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram at popculturingmybff_podcast underscore podcast for behind the scenes content and more.